Wait for it. Hey, hold on. So, I got a metaphor. Why am I coming out of this tiny house that I built for my kids? Well, here's the metaphor. When you set up your website and you go through all of the pain and process of building page after page, and then you just slap on Google Analytics and never look back at it again, it's like building a house and never getting to enjoy it. Well, I'm a little too big for this one, but seriously, this thing, I, I put it together, it had like 174 parts, took me forever. And it's like not getting to watch your kids play with it. That's the most fun part. So the most fun part of building a website and interacting with it, it comes from Google Analytics and GA4. We're going to talk about it, but it can be confusing. So we're just going to break it down as simply as possible into two buckets. And to do that, I'm going to go get our senior data engineer to just explain it to me as though I were a kindergartner. How good, how many? Whenever I get lost and confused in the land of GA4, I come back to, am I looking for metrics that tell me how good is the traffic or how much? And that's a qualitative and quantitative bucket. So I brought our senior data engineer here, Axel, to, to help us parse this out. And we're going to play the desert island game where... Here is an island. I'm going to bring my like one or two metrics and I'll kick us off. When I just start at the high level, it looks like when I log into GA4, I'm really given a how many style of metric. And that comes in the shape of users. I have begun to trust users, but just really quickly, how are users calculated off the bat as a count? In general, users said created mainly based on a uh, visit to your site. Generally, Google Analytics will create a little cookie that would give it a sense of this is going to be a person and any interaction in there is going to be from the same person. That's the main base of how users get calculated. If you raise your cache or if you change your history, clear everything, then you'll count as another user if you go back to that site. Uh, so that would be two visitors, two users on a site. A, I love you call person. it cache. I think that really brings a certain cache. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> if you clear your cache, cache, that's there. But I think it's a 14-month rolling window where it sets cookies, even though GA4 is event-first tracking. Like, everything is an event, except when it's not. And I trust right. more or less this idea of users because I'm, I'm interested in people and the attention there. The next metric I will throw at you is sessions and engaged sessions. Note, I am not bringing new users to the island. I don't like them, I don't trust them, and I don't want to see them, but they keep giving them to me. So I'm going to bring sessions to the island. But what is a session in the land of GA4? So very close to universal analytics, sessions are kind of like under the user. A user can have multiple sessions. Hmm. The session is defined, one, by the first visit event, so if a user has arrived to your site today, they are generating a new session if it's for the first time on that day, right? That is based on that first visit event. It will kind of add it into the cookie of that user in your browser. And then by default, if let's say Axel is the user on your site is browsing through Hallwell, then he goes off and starts like watching YouTube videos. 30 minutes timer will start from that oh moment. so there's of like an inactivity. inactivity so if i go away and come back i like that though because it gives me yeah. an idea of how a human's actually interacting and it's a separate interaction it's like a different meal of the day so i could have oh i have one unique user but if they're coming for a breakfast and dinner well that's you know if i'm running a restaurant quite valuable to me yeah. to know that which is why i love that sessions count because I think I, I think I understand it. And it gives me that like, all right, a, a user is that one unique customer that came to my restaurant every single day, but that's still one person. How many times, how many, how many plates maybe or, or meals they had? Like those are my sessions, right? Is that close? Yeah, I would say meals in that sense. Like you have, meals. you have this visitor coming in and having breakfast. They can have mm. multiple plates. They can have a milkshake or a coffee. Those would be different events, different actions. You often have like a milkshake site. and a coffee together. Is that like? I always have them all together. I'll, I'll just pour them into the same glass. Uh, that's how I roll. Um, but let's say they, then I have to leave, go to work, come back mm. for dinner. That's a different session. We're mm -hmm, having something mm -hmm. completely different. 
still interacting with a different food, that would be your events, your actions. Yeah. On the and a little nuance on that is that when you see the word engaged session, there is, mm-hmm. what is it, a 10 second or longer type of interaction. So it's not a one and done, that's a session. It's like, well, maybe you didn't have it. And then there's also the question of if it's not an active window, it can actually tell. So I like the specificity of engaged sessions where you actually there eating your milkshake coffee together for at least 10 seconds. Or did you chug right. that thing in five seconds and walk away because life choices? That is just a regular session. There was no engagement right. there. Is there anything else you'd put in the how many, the quantitative bucket for you? Or should we move on to how good? I would move on to how good. I think Let's there's three metrics. All right. What do you bring into your how basically. good island? Qual- qualitative island. It sounds like a bad MTV reality show that no one would watch. <laughs> I mean, I still would kind of like dive into those engagement values. Like there's average engagement time. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about average session duration, which is now average engagement time. And average engagement time can be set by user or by session. Oh, that makes sense. I care about attention and attention is measured in moments, seconds, minutes. And I can tell how and where that came from. I absolutely love that. I'll go with the low hanging fruit. When I come to Qualitative Island, not a real place yet, trademark, pending, I would bring conversions, which are designated events that are running. Because remember, in GA4, everything is an event. Everything is an event. So in, in GA4, it is a conversion set by me saying like, all right, when somebody signs up for my newsletter, boom. When somebody fills out this form, boom. I want to know those because that's, that's, I mean, that's why we're in the game, right? Yeah, you can have many clicks, but one sign up can make a difference. And that's why having it as a conversion, it's very valuable. You can decide that it's, if it's a conversion that can be happening multiple times and it's still valuable, keep it as an event. Sometimes we want certain things to be a little bit more specific to a session. And mm. what GA4 is now allowing us to do is setting up those conversions at the session level, which would be closer to how we were experiencing. Um, goals in universal analytics. So we talked adding conversions to qualitative island. What other metrics would you add, if any, to qualitative island? Well, there was there's one that we all missed from universal analytics, which was bounce rate. It was very popular and it's, mm. it was really helpful for uh, marketing in general. Now we have the quasi opposite of it in GA4 which is engagement rate. So it's the positive version of the bounce rate. What is the percentage of interactions on the site for a session? That's pretty much the idea of engagement rate. So for instance, let's say I come to one page of the site and I immediately leave without triggering any other events. I have bounced. I'm like the inverse of engagement rate. Whereas what are the percent of people that just didn't do that? What are the percent of people that triggered more than one event or went to like more than one page of your site or stayed for more than like 10 seconds of time, right? Exactly. Yeah. I think this is super important to understand. And it's like, okay, glass is half full. I see you GA4, but engagement rate, I I think that does matter for for a given page. So I, I do like that as a qualitative island ad. Thanks, Axel. Super helpful. I think we've really helped to focus it in because there's so many numbers that this platform throws at you. And I'll be honest, I get confused sometimes. That's why we have a course on Whole Whale that you can find, wholewhale.com slash analytics for all of our resources. Axel, thank you for playing Which Island Would You Go To? Metric metric Island. Thank you. I'll take my milkshake with coffee now. (laughs) 